ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930 present The Drive. Brought to you by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. Local then, local now. Member FDIC. Welcome into the Tuesday, August 13th edition. Your drive begins now on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. I'm your host, Paul Swan. You can join the program anytime by calling the Miller Lite phone lines. I do encourage you this hour at 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255. Miller Lite holds true great taste, only 96 calories. It is the original light beer. You can also find me on Twitter, at Paul Swan. You can also find the show on Facebook by searching The Drive with Paul Swan. And if you haven't been on Facebook the last few hours, you missed out on the special announcement that he made himself because he's actually better at promoting me than I am. (laughs) He's going to take over being my agent. Chris Dickerson joining us. You know him from all his years of covering sports in Wayne County. Yeah, you've done it all, Herald Dispatch. You've got the uh, right now the what the West Virginia record. I was going to say the most popular petition in Wayne County to to make things happen well, in sports. You yeah. you've got that. Mm-hmm. You got the record. You got everything. But um, I thought it'd be a cool idea to get you in here because uh, you're sort of like the spokesman of the group that's going in uh, to the Marshall Journalism Hall of Fame. I get a special group coming in, and uh, you're 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 like the unofficial spokesman of the group, probably. Well. Part of it is because I am just happen to be president of the School of Journalism Alumni Advisory Board. Okay, that helps. Yeah, and uh, then I was uh, honored, and I'm still kind of overwhelmed and surprised and humbled by the fact that they did nominate me and vote to induct me into the Hall of Fame this year. Did they do that with your knowledge, or you did you? They did that against my better wishes. Okay. So- now, th- every year we open up the field for nominations, and uh, someone nominated me. And when the votes, when they all come in, I looked at him. I said, that's very nice, but please don't vote for me. And uh, Janet Dooley, who is the associate dean of the school, uh, said, well, you're on the short list. We're still going to consider you. And I said, well, that's fine. And I ask everyone on the board not to vote for me, and they still did. So it, it's very nice, um, you know, even though I don't think I'm worthy, but it's 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 such an honor. I mean, there's only 60 some people in the Hall of Fame, uh, and some great names, people I've worked with, people that I've looked up to for years and years, um, mentors of mine, teachers, uh, people that I consider role models. Uh, it's just, it's very humbling. What is the criteria? What makes um someone eligible for a nomination because it, it feels like uh, we haven't had this in a long time, even though it's existed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, say the uh, the Marshall Hall of Fame for athletes. Um, yeah, we know everything. We know the process there. Right. Uh, what's the process here? Well, there are two criteria, one of two criteria that each person who's inducted has to meet. One, you have to have been a, a graduate of the School of Journalism and Mass Communications or whatever it was called at the time. It was just School of Journalism when I was there. Uh, secondly, if not, if you're not a graduate, you have to have uh, contributed to the School of Journalism either through treasure or talent, and that may, that leaves it open to benefactors or people who have taught there for four decades. Um, you have to have contributed to the School of Journalism. And this is something I think that has uh, taken prominence over the last few years, especially with um, the fact that we really haven't seen. Mm-hmm. Uh, activity out of this. So what what got this reignited? Well, um, it started back in the seventies, the, the Hall of Fame, and uh, you know we put some very notable people in there. People who won Pulitzers and you know Boz Johnson, people names that people around here know. Automatic names. Uh, yeah, you know the first ballot ones, as you might call them. Um, and then for several years. I can't remember now if it was the 1990s or early 2000s. It kind of went dormant, and they didn't do anything. Well, five or six years ago, this alumni advisory board was started up to try to help help the School of Journalism have a public presence. And one of the things that we, we decided is we really need to get this Hall of Fame back rolling again. Uh, so the first few years, we were actually just busy getting pictures of the people who'd been into the Hall of Fame, and we didn't have them up on the wall yet. There's, you know, there's actually a Hall of Fame in uh, Smith Hall down at uh, Marshall. Not many people know about no, it. No, I yeah. didn't even know that. Uh, 
but we worked on getting it basically physically ready. And then I think this will be, this is either the fourth or fifth year that we started inducting people. And every fall we have a, a banquet and a ceremony for induction. And it just, it, there's, it's not five every year. It's not like we have to have that. It just so happens that all four years we've done it, we've had five people who are being inducted. And we have a ceremony. Uh, we have, each year we've had more than 200 people show up for the banquet. It's hosted um, by a local personality. Last year is Ernie Anderson. Uh, we had, um, um, let's see who else, Bill Bissett, who's the now the president of the Huntington Area Chamber of Commerce. Right. Uh, different hosts through the years, and uh, we, it's a great turnout. We have people from all over the country, alumni who come back just one time a year. Some people who haven't been back since they graduated, um, they come back for this. It's, it's, it's really a nice event. It feels like there's also a lot of sports guys that are getting in this. Uh, I know that's not the, the goal here. Right. Um, but it just so happens there are a lot of prominent sports personalities yeah. who have gone through the school or been a part of the school in some way or another. It, 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 that's true. And, you know, and even when I was a student there and years before, there wasn't really a sports journalism focus. You know, now that you can actually major in sports journalism. Uh, but – we just had a really good run of people who ended up doing sports. Um, Keith Morehouse, like you said, who's he's being inducted this year along with me. Uh, I did sports for a few years. Few years. Chad Pennington was nominated or was inducted a few years ago. And you know, the uh, funny story is when I reached out to him after he'd been nominated, uh, and when he was actually voted to go into the Hall of Fame, I called him and said, you know, Chad, we're uh, You've been voted into the School of Journalism Hall of Fame. And he basically said, what have I done that warrants that? And I said, well, you did one year of color commentary for Fox Sports. You know how many of us want former sports writers and current sports writers would kill for that? <laughs> so he said, okay. well, you've got a point there. Okay, so you got in there. <laughs> yeah. But uh, two others a few years ago, Jody Jivett and Mike Cherry. I worked with them for years and years at the Daily Mail. Mike also worked at the Charleston Gazette for a while. And they were just both fantastic writers and fantastic guys. Um, Jody, especially, he was a sports editor when I was there for many years. And he uh, he played a big part in sh- showing me about journalism and how, to, how, how it can affect the real world. Uh, he was a great sports writer, as was Mike. They've both since passed on. But, uh, yeah, and... Uh, Trying to think. I know there's been at least one other one. Oh, Jerry Tipton, who uh, he, he graduated from Marshall. He worked for a little while at the Herald-Dispatch, but then he has for 40, more than 40 years, I think, been the beat writer for the Lexington herald Leader for UK basketball, yeah. which is a pretty sweet gig. <laughs> yeah, we had him on here, uh, yeah. and he's uh, he's pretty humble about it. Uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. He enjoyed his time at Marshall. Yeah, he did, and yeah, he, he loved it here, and uh, he – he, he hadn't been back here too many times just because of the nature of his job. You know, covering U.K. basketball is pretty much a year, full-time year-round gig. It's a great gig. It's a great gig. I, I mean, would love to. <laughs> it's the gift that keeps giving every year. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't stop. That's Some colleges, some universities, uh, they have a, a great following mm-hmm. with their team. And then, yeah. you know, when the season's over, the beat's over for yeah. a while. Yeah. Not with U.K. Yeah, just take, like, Boise State, for example. You know, their basketball writer doesn't really have to worry about them in, eight, in June. And no, July he's much. good. He, yeah, he, he, he can go to the beach. <laughs> yeah, not Jerry. <laughs> yeah. No, he can't go to the beach. He probably had to get special permission to take off to come to this thing. Yeah, and I, I, I remember I told Jerry when he came back, and I talked to him on the phone and stuff, but um, he doesn't remember it. But when I was 11 or 12 years old, my cousin – was married to a woman who ended up eventually being UK's ticket manager, but she worked in the ticket office at the time. So uh, one day, one one season, UK was playing Syracuse in basketball. They were number one and two in the country. Saturday, Sunday afternoon, CBS Sports. I'm sitting on press row between Jerry Tipton and Curry Kirkpatrick from Sports Illustrated. And Kirkpatrick just looks at me and says, what are you doing here? And I said, I'm going to be a sports writer one day. And I was. <laughs> and now you can say I'm a Hall of Famer to him. <laughs> yeah, well, but they are too. So. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. But you can say, well, so am I. You can, you can do that. Chris Dickerson's joining us. Uh, he is uh, currently with uh, the West Virginia record, but he has had a, a long career. We're going to talk to him a little bit more about his career. He's also um, going to be a really 
uh, helping flesh out this year's class because we mentioned there are some sports broadcasting and journalism types that are going into this thing and then we'll mm-hmm. talk about this uh, of course uh, Chris is well known in the community as well he's a uh, person who uh, if he has a passion project he goes in all in we'll get an update on that and of course we'll get your phone calls in you can join us by calling 877-420-TALK 877-420-8255 those are the Miller Lite phone line numbers that you need. It's The Drive on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930, presented by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. You're listening to The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. We're presented by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. Welcome back to the Tuesday, August 13th edition. I'm Paul Swan. Chris Dickerson's joining us on the program as well. He as a man of many talents, many titles, uh, we'll just go with uh, currently at the West Virginia record. And, of course, he's also part of Marshall University. The School of Journalism has a Hall of Fame that not only is he a part of from the back inside that he was also honored. He's going to go in with a lot of talented people uh, that are there now and that are going in. And uh, you're there. Keith Morehouse mm-hmm. is there. And uh, Rick Hayes is there as well. Yeah. And we don't care about Keith. He's not that interesting. <laughs> I mean, no, th- we're not talking Keith. You don't. He no. might hear you. He's just a block away. He, he's busy. Okay. He, he's too big time for this <laughs> show. He's doing whatever he does at this hour. Yeah. Uh, I don't get to see Keith because I'm here and he's over there. Right. But the, no, no. Well, Keith, we, we all know Keith. I mean, he's yeah. the he's the darling of this group. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. He, he's the face. Yeah, he's the face of this group. No, I want to talk about Rick Hayes. Okay. Rick Hay has been at Marshall for more than 40 years. 42, I think, but I'm not exactly sure of that. He has he estimates that he has taken more than a million photographs during his time. He's the photographer for University Communications, the PR w- department at the school. Uh, he has covered who knows how many sporting events over those 40 years. I mean, you can only imagine because he covers every sport from football and basketball to um, softball and tennis and volleyball and, you know, clubs, club sports. He covers academic events. He covers, like, uh, the Quoits tournament when they have it every uh, summer, spring on campus. Uh, he has seen and done it all at Marshall. He, I mean – if you've seen a photo that involved Marshall University for the last 40 years, there is a very good chance that Rick Hay took it. What has what has been the secret of his success? Um, because that sounds like a job that you've got to be so invested in because it's sometimes a thankless job. Oh, it's a thankless job, uh, as any photographer will tell you, because, you know, with the years of working in newspapers, a photographer – is the person who is going to grab people's attention with their photographs. You've got to have a good photograph there on page one for people to pay attention. Uh, a good headline won't always do the trick. Um, but Rick is a very good photographer. He has an eye. And in sports, you have to kind of anticipate what's going to happen. You know, you can't just stay in one spot. And that's what makes a good, a good photographer a great photographer is anticipating what's going to happen. And there are times when you just get lucky and get the right shot, but Rick is really good at what he does. He's uh, He actually, you said he, it's a thankless job. He he received an Unsung Hero Award from, I think, the United Way, if you, some group, but they recognize that, you know, he, he does a lot that people don't recognize. He, photographers don't always get the attention they deserve. But yeah, because he's been there as long as I can remember. Yeah, yeah. I can't think of a time where... I was at a Marshall sporting event, and he wasn't there. Right. Even when we were kids, you know, you saw photographers, and you say, oh, I, that guy's been there since I was a kid. <laughs> so, yeah, but he's, he's really good at what he does. Does he show any signs of, like, oh, okay, I'm done? I'm just, uh, I'm just Not that I know of. Uh, I know his stuff's just as good as it always has been. Uh, and I, if I were him, I'd be wanting to retire. That's, that's my goal in life now is just to retire. But uh, he, he loves what he does. And that, that shows in, in the product that he puts out. Now, I was joking about Keith Morehouse, but we, we have to talk Keith because, yeah. um, as we said, Keith's the darling of the group. Uh, yeah. Keith is that guy who, as much as I joke with him and I tease him about how big time he is, mm-hmm. uh, he's not. Yeah. And I mean that in, in the most polite, humble way because the guy, as big time as he really is, and he could be, mm-hmm. he's just 
you know, down to earth and takes it day by day. And, yeah. uh, you know, if you heap praise on him, he's probably, you know, sitting here going, stop. Stop talking about me. Yeah, and you're exactly right. He's very humble. And, you know, the people who have lived around here 40 and 50 years, they remember Dave Metzold. He was good. He went on to Columbus, and he's doing great. He works for Fox Sports Ohio and does stuff. You know, he has a radio broadcast there in Columbus. Well, Keith was right there with him. Keith could have went just about anywhere he wanted, but he chose to stay here because he loves this area. And uh, we people don't realize how lucky we are to have someone of Keith's caliber doing sports on the TV every night. Um, that's another thing I wanted to mention about this Hall of Fame class. There's five of us. It's Keith and Rick Hay, as you mentioned, myself, uh, Sandy Wells, and Janet Dooley. And Janet, like I said, is the associate dean and uh, runs the School of Journalism. Sandy Wells worked at the Charleston Gazette for decades and decades, and she unfortunately passed a few years ago. But what I really like about this class, and this is the first time we've had this since we started the Hall of Fame back up, and, and maybe the whole time we've had this Hall of Fame, all of the inductees are from the tri-state area, and they have worked their entire careers pretty much in the tri-state area. I'm sure the list is going to be long of people who you can nominate for this. Mm -hmm. um, and it feels like, yeah, there's a lot of them who decided just to stay here. They yeah. came to get their education, do whatever they were planning on doing mm -hmm. uh, with Marshall, and then decided, I think I'll stay. Yeah. Um, do you see that with um, with other you know, journalists that go somewhere and then decide to stay? I mean, it, it seems like that's uh, something I, I see more here than— I, It seems to be more prevalent here, yeah. Um, you know, just take Lexington, for example. I was just thinking about Jerry Tipton. Uh, UK has a very good journalism program, too, but they're saturated in the media market. Um, Huntington, uh, we have, there are some very good journalists and people who cover sports and just the news on a daily basis here. And a lot of them have, you know, I think that's, Indicative of West Virginia, though, kind of. You know, West Virginia people are very unique in that there's a much more deep sense of pride of their home and their home state than most areas of the country, I think. Yeah. And I also kind of feel that I'm glad this is uh, something that's uh, started back up because there's a lot of people who it feels like maybe this part of the state sometimes gets the shaft when it comes to, uh, you know, just media. Yeah. And... For the longest time, if you go to a game in Conference USA, Marshall probably had the largest media contingent right. of that school. Mm -hmm. Maybe and not the case now, but it, it was for the longest time. I think there are a lot of factors in that. You know, and it's, and it's not just football, but I think football is probably the biggest one, and it's because of the Marshall football story. I mean, you know, there's there's a following just – around the country, even people who didn't go to Marshall who keep up with the team because of they know the story. I was reading a story not long ago, and uh, it, it was actually a season preview of the Marshall football team this year, and I don't remember who wrote it. I think it was on SB Nation, that website. But the, the lead was the guy said, I like college football more when Marshall is playing well. And he said that that's, it's the ultimate team with a chip on its shoulder. And out to prove something. He says, when they're good, it's more fun to watch college football in general. So, you know, peop people know who Marshall, what the school, me what the team means to the school and the community. And I think that just carries over to the journalism community. Chris Dickerson is joining us on the program. Now, I want to get something started for, for people like myself, Jason Toy, to have mm -hmm. a chance. Yeah. Here, I mean, because we're, we're not going to get in. We know it. <laughs> we're we're not you know we we're not going to be the Keith Morehouse. Hey, you never class. know. We're not. We know it. We know better. We just know. Uh, we want a WMUL FM Hall of Fame. Okay. Uh, even then, we might not get in. I don't know. Well, we need to get Doctor Bailey started. on Yeah, that. I mean, because we have to induct Doctor Bailey first. Well, yeah, he's in every Hall of yeah, Fame. Yeah, he's in every Hall of Fame. Right. Um, we'll have to get him. What Chuck Cook? We'll have to get him in there. Right. You know, how many other people over there that uh, have are still there? Uh, well, there, I'm sure there are a few. Yeah, uh, I'm drawing a blank. I mean, right we'll now. have to get yeah. We'll have to put Keith Spears in this thing Keith as well. Keith Spears, of course. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, um, ha we'll have to do that. Chad Pennington. I'm right. Chad Pennington had his own show on he'll WMUL. Have to, he'll have to get in first. Yeah, right. I mean, we can't supersede him, but you know, maybe when myself, Jason Toy, who you know, mm -hmm. he's done an okay job. I mean, he hasn't had the NASCAR career you've had. 
Well, no, I think he's ha- he's far <laughs> surpassed me on NASCAR. I mean, but was he the first guy in the state to cover it on a full time basis? N- no. Well, no. You know, as far as I know, now I, you know I know Jason has been covering it for years and years with, uh, you know his. Uh, he was born to it. He was born to it, and Spencer Aggins used to cover it some, and uh, some of the other guys on TV. But you know, uh, back in the 1990s when NASCAR was really big. I worked at the Charleston Daily Mail, and I was I was a sports copy editor most of the time there. And I, one day, I went. My dad was a big NASCAR fan, and, and in turn, I became a NASCAR fan back then. And it was the fastest growing sport in the country. You know, you heard all that stuff about NASCAR back then. I went to my managing editor, Chris Stadelman, who's also in the Hall of Fame. And he, unfortunately, he's a dear friend of mine who passed a little while ago. But I went to him one day and I said, "We need to start covering NASCAR, and I want to do it." And he looked at me and he said, okay, let's do it. And I started off, I I was covering just like four races a season. And by the time I quit doing it, when I became the city editor of the paper, I was up to like 12 races a year. And we'd go, you know, I'd go to Charlotte and Bristol and Martinsburg or Martinsville, uh, the close tracks. Uh, But I was writing it every week. I'd go every year to the annual media tour, which they invited like 100 journalists from around the country. Uh, I remember... One of the first ones I went to, I was sitting on the bus because they would just take us to different garages around Charlotte area. Yeah. And we'd talk to the drivers and the owners and things like that. I was sitting beside this really young kid, and he was a nervous wreck. He had uh, just graduated from Radford. He was scared to death to write a story. He wasn't sure of himself. And uh, I said, Marty, Marty Smith, who's now on ESPN. Yeah. You'll do just fine. You'll be all right, Marty. Yeah. Because so, he had a personality. Nice. <laughs> Chris Dickerson's joining us. Uh, we're going to take your phone calls. You can join us at any time. All you have to do is call 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255 to be a part of the Miller Lite phone lines. Miller Lite hold true, great taste, only 96 calories, the original light beer. we got more on the way. It's The Drive, presented by Huntington Federal Savings Bank on ESPN, 94.1 FM and AM 930. 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255 to be a part of the Miller Lite phone lines on today's edition of The Drive, presented by Huntington Federal Savings Bank on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Paul Swan, Chris Dickerson joining us from the West Virginia Record and Parts Unknown, Lay's Kiss Concert, wherever you can find him. He's, he's, he's a man of many mysteries and talents. That's right. I looked at you earlier. I said, where's your Kiss shirt? And then he showed me his Kiss tattoo. I'm like, okay. I've always got it on. So um, the Journalism Hall of Fame, we've been talking about that, Mm -hmm. and uh, there are some really colorful personalities who are are in and going in, and and you you are probably more active now than I can ever remember. Uh, You have uh, not only been doing this, uh, as we mentioned earlier in the show, uh, Mm -hmm. you've been pushing for – some community involvement right. from uh, Wayne High School, and uh, I'll just let you update me on that. Okay. You were, uh, you know, you had a petition started. You were trying to do something nice for right. somebody. I started and a petition back in November or December. I wanted to, I thought it would be a great idea to name Wayne High School's football field, which is called Pioneer Field, uh, to name it after Coach Scott Gerald, who coached at the high school for 18 years. Uh, he. Uh, when they moved from their old location to the new, the current high school in 1968, he was largely responsible for getting that field built, and he did a lot of the work himself. Of course, he didn't do it alone. I'm not. No one's going to tr- try to say that. I don't think. But, it, yeah, I really but, don't think anyone believed that. Right. But he, uh, you know, he would he would till the ground. He would sow the grass. He would pick up rocks. He would line the field. I mean, he did. He wasn't just a coach. He was. He was the man behind the field. So I thought this would be a great idea to have the field named after him and uh, started a petition, and we got thousands of signatures. I went to the school board. I, was, I wanted to find out how the process would go. What, what do we have to do to make this happen? And uh, went to several meetings, uh, talked about it, had people who had – Coach Gerald had a profound impact on their lives. Uh, and, you know, it finally came around that a few months ago – myself and Coach Gerald's family, his widow and his daughter and his nephew, uh, we had a meeting with the uh, school uh, superintendent and the principal, and they didn't 
it's it's school it's policy that they don't like naming facilities in Wayne County after people because you know in 40 years they might want to name something else you know whatever so they said they weren't going to do that but they offered us proposal for there to be a like a plaque a stone plaque when you walk into Pioneer Field to honor coach Gerald with a picture of him and the family's going to write something about his career and what he meant to the not just the athletes but he was a guidance counselor he impacted thousands of students lives uh something right there when you walk in this was already in the works but there's going to be a bust of him that will be installed if not this fall next fall every year there will be a coach gerald night a home game and a f- member of the family or somebody will be involved in the coin toss and things like that and we're still working on the uh the fine-tuning it but we might start a fundraising drive to get a new scoreboard for the field, which is in desperate need. And they said that we would be able to, you know, if we raise the f- funds for it, we could put his picture, you know, it's not going to be named Scott Gerald Field or Scott Gerald Stadium, but we could put his picture and say in memory of C- Coach Scott Gerald on the uh, scoreboard as well. So that might be coming. We might have more information on that sometime soon. Not the victory you're looking for, but pretty happy so far. Right. Yeah, you know, uh, yeah, not the victory we were hoping for. And there – you know, there were a lot of people in the community uh, who thought it should just remain Pioneer Field to honor everyone, and I, abs- I absolutely see that point. I just, I've just i always said all along, Coach Gerald Field, Pioneer Stadium, or Pioneer Field, Coach Gerald Stadium, so you can honor everyone and one per- person in particular. Uh, yeah, <laughs> there, there were some things said about me that you just wouldn't believe. There, someone told me that I... Uh, uh, shouldn't have any say because I don't live in Wayne anymore and that I don't pay taxes and I don't go to every single football game. Uh, there was one person who told said that I, I wanted to take the name Pioneer off the stadium, which wasn't true. That was in the original petition. Someone actually said I wanted to change the mascot at Wayne High School, and I thought I'd have to get rid of half my wardrobe if we did that. <laughs> so, <laughs> when I coached at Hurricane Middle School, Half the time I had a Wayne Pioneer T-shirt yeah. under my polo. So. Uh, how, how do you change the mascot? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I didn't get any of that when this proposal came no, in originally. And it wasn't true. You know, it's just people start. To, you know, I talked to Coach Tom Harmon uh, at the last board meeting because he showed up, and he said, you know, that people had been saying that he was behind the push against it, and I knew that wasn't the case, and uh, he wanted to make sure that people knew that. Um, uh, he. <laughs> And he said, I said, I've heard that. I knew it wasn't true. And he said, well, I've heard things that you said. And I said, those aren't true. You know, this has never been about anything except honoring one man. Uh, so, but, and that's fine. You know, I, I still am not happy with the final decision, but at least there's going to be some kind of commemoration of the guy. And we're talking more about him than we probably have in a long while. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And if nothing else, another thing that I, th- I thought of through this process is a lot of people got involved in the community and they saw how the school board, a, a school board, not not just Wayne County, but how a school board operates. And if nothing else, they got a little civics lesson <laughs> as a bonus. So, so the good news <laughs> is uh, we're going to talk about him a lot more because he's going to be more present at yeah. football games. and Exactly. Yeah. High school sports are, are so hard to begin with to try to do anything yeah. because you've got people who used to be a part of it. Mm-hmm. You've got people who are part of it now. Maybe sometimes they just don't mesh together. Right. Uh, it's so it's a possessive thing. More, almost more than anything, high school sports seem to be a possessive thing of, of people in the community. Right. Because for a lot of people, that's all they have, and, and I mean that in, just in a sports term. But right. Just yeah, yeah. This is this is ours. This yeah. is the, the thing that we call ours. And as you know, w- Wayne has had a very good football program for more than twenty years now, under Coach Harmon. And even when the team was two and eight and one and nine and three and seven before he got there, his first year they were winless. But you know, when they when they the team was not that good, it was still Wayne's own. Right. You know, still loved the team. So it's ju- it's just. Uh, and everyone, everyone above a certain age out there knows how important Coach Gerald was. And if, if, if you don't think the field should be named after him, that's fantastic. That's, I mean, I, you're welcome to your opinion. I'm going to push for some naming in a few years. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to – the uh, Mike Power sideline. Well, every sideline Mike's on is his. Right, the Mike Power sideline and the, um, the public address booth, the Ryan Epling public address booth. Uh, the, uh, 
Ryan has done fantastic. Yeah. I mean, he he is a fantastic uh, play by play or pub, public address announcer. Some of the most important people in my life all are at Wayne High School on Friday night <laughs> watching the football game. Right. And I'm a Huntington High boy. And sometimes Keith Morehouse is out there too. Well, so he should. As he should. So he should. Sometimes be. Tim Ears out there though. Yeah. Yeah. What's uh, what's the bigger deal, Tim Ear or uh, Keith? I think Tim because it's a rarity. Okay, so you get more yeah. pop out of him. Yeah, my dad gets more excited when he sees Tim show up. Tim Ear, Spencer Atkins. Let's throw a little. Uh, Ooh, yeah, man, oh man. Uh huh. He'd probably have to go with Tim, but really over yeah. Spence? Wow. Well, I can't say that for sure. I'll have to ask him. Okay. Yeah, because I, I, you know, I've never, I've seen Spencer there, but I don't know if my dad ever has. Okay. So yeah, Tim is a pretty big deal. <laughs> yeah, he's an anchor. Now, if Tony Cavalier showed up, who knows what would happen? Trumps all of them? Uh, probably, yeah. I don't know, because, you know, you just expect Powers to be there, Mike. Yeah. You well, just... and he was for years and years when his son was playing. Right. You know, and he I'm sure he's not there every Friday night now, but I'm sure there's still an occasion where he, that's his coverage, working for Channel. He's, um, he's, he's covering Steelers games. So, yeah. 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 Well, and his son's working yeah. for the Steelers, which yeah. is great. Kind of how that works. <laughs> yeah. Funny how that works. Yeah. <laughs> uh, of course, uh, Mike. I love Mike because he's um, he's my dedicated Pittsburgh Pirates listener. Yeah. To, when we even when the Pirates are doing as terrible as they are right now, right. Powers is the guy. Mike's a great guy. If, like, as you said, he went to Wayne. He played football, at Marshall. He uh, now works with the School of Journalism a lot too. He'll be in the Hall of Fame here soon. Absolutely. Right. As he should be. Yeah. Uh, I want to see the list of names. Of, yeah. We'll talk off here. We only I, have, I see the, we only have three Wayne High people in there now. Okay. Counting me. Uh, so I've got to work on that. Yeah, I want to see the list of people who didn't get in. <laughs> I, we can talk about that. Okay, let's, we'll talk about that. We're going to talk about that <laughs> off the air. Uh, we'll come back and uh, we'll continue on. You can join the program as well, 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255. It's The Drive, presented by Huntington Federal Savings Bank on ESPN, 94.1 FM and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN, 94.1 Presented by Huntington Federal Savings Bank. You can join the program by calling the Miller Lite phone lines, 877-420-TALK, 877-420-8255. Miller Lite, hold true, great taste, only 96 calories, the original light beer. And, of course, you can also find the show on Apple Podcasts if you miss any part of today's show. Or if you're one of Chris's friends and, um, well, you want to relive Chris's adventures over and over again. You can go find the show on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, TuneIn, Spotify, wherever you get your podcast. I have to promote the podcast more. Dr. Bailey said I'm not doing enough. Oh, of okay. It. Well, if someone wants to relive my adventures over and over, first I suggest they go out and get a life. But then they can listen to it while they're running or hiking or whatever they're doing. So <laughs> we got to hit some sports <laughs> news before we uh, get back to talking to Chris. Um, and I haven't seen a press release yet from Marshall. I'm hoping one will follow soon because uh, I need a pronunciation guide. C.J. Burks, he's going to start his pro career with Palacanestro. Now, I've been working on this, Chris. Orzanuvio, uh, see? Yeah. I blew that completely. Orzanuvio. Nailed it. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, The Palacanestro team and the Italian Series A2. We'll just go with that. So, uh CJ is getting to uh, play a little uh, international basketball, and that's good for him. Yeah, great. What he, what that whole team, but you know, he and uh, John Elmore did for the program the last few years has just been fantastic. I it, think it's fun to go down and watch Marshall basketball again. Yeah, it is. Uh, I think you've got this Orza Nuevo. That's it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I hope so. Uh, I, I probably should have consulted a D'Antoni on this before uh, trying to pronounce these uh, Italian he would, names. He would know it for sure. Hopefully <laughs> better. I would be disappointed if uh, he didn't. Uh, that's the only bad thing about these guys going overseas is I cannot pronounce some of these Italian names. Yeah, yeah, that's t- it's tough. Uh, but they'll be carrying the Marshall banner, which is fantastic. So Chris has joined us today. Uh, we've been talking to Chris about just basically uh, Chris's life, and he's also been telling us about the uh, School of Journalism and Mass Communications Hall of Fame. Uh, a lot of sports guys are on that. And, I mean, we joke about, you know, I've joked about Dr. Bailey over at WMUL a lot. Mm-hmm. He's sort of like a character on this show, even, <laughs> you know, even though he's not on this show. Yeah. And uh, I don't think people realize that Marshall has one of the finest broadcasting programs in the country and maybe you just don't know it because you don't see these guys and ladies on sports center every day right yeah i mean it's a great source of pride for 
the School of Journalism and for Marshall University what uh, that department does. I mean, every year when I've, the last few years I've went and attended or spoke at the uh, hall of the, the graduation dinner for the School of Journalism the night before the big graduation, you know, and uh, they they talk about everything that's happened at the school that year, and it's you know, and Dr. Bailey's team has amassed 647 awards, and there's probably about 15 more that have been announced today. You know, and it's uh, what he, what they do is fantastic, and it it's a fantastic radio station, and that's without the adjective college. It's just a great radio station. It's just a really good college radio station <laughs> D- does he walk in a room like floyd money mayweather you know holding the title belt does he walk in a room like that yeah he does uh every time i mean you know he there's no way that he can make it through an airport security with that all the gold that he just wears under under his shirt on his shirt on his jacket lapel pins uh epaulets on his shoulder i mean he just you know he's decorated he's like the bill belichick of uh of college radio broadcasting yeah he, yeah, he's, he's really good at what he does, in all seriousness. You know that. Yeah, so. <laughs> I know that. And, of course, he and he, to, and he was inducted into the Hall of Fame a couple of years ago. Well, he had to be. You, yeah. you, you would have invalidated your Hall of Fame without And he would him. have been in a long time before that, but th- like I said, that the, the thing was dormant for a few years. But once we got it kick-started again, he was right there. I think I'm personally responsible for at least uh, one Hall of Fame he's in, or, or one major or two major. Is it the I'm, radio I'm, one? Uh, it's the AP stuff. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm responsible for, at least partially responsible okay. for a couple yeah. of those. So. He deserves all of it. Yeah, I was... Um, yeah, back when uh, they put me in charge of the uh, West Virginia Broadcasters Association, mm-hmm. uh, you know the AP. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, as, you know, basically I got drafted, right? And then I, you know, I, I was kicked all the way up to president eventually. <laughs> yeah, I rubber stamped that. <laughs> yeah, he's he's certainly worthy. He's he's done great. Th- I mean, all of the people that have come out of that program. I mean, there, there's so many people, like you said, that people just don't know about all over the country that just doing great things. Chris Dickerson joining us. So um, what's next for you? Uh, I know you got this award banquet's coming up. Yeah, but, uh, the, what's coming up for you? The banquet is September 20th, uh, 6 p.m. at the uh, Student Center. Hopefully it'll be – renovations will be done by then. Um, people can get tickets online. At, at, uh, you can, if, for more information, you can email sojmc at marshall.edu. Um, that's the School of Journalism and Mass Communications at marshall.edu. Um that I continue my work every day on the West Virginia record and the Southeast Texas record and the Northern California record and the Southern California record. How fun is that? Oh, it's a blast. And uh, um, uh, so let's see what else we've got going on. You know, I'll be there helping set up the uh, first Coach Gerald night, like we talked about. Okay. Uh, it's October 11th, I think. I think they're playing Herbert Hoover. Um, Will there be a book follow? You know, the um, yeah. yeah. Will the Coach Gerald book be coming? <laughs> it, it, it's, he, he certainly had a great career. He, he has a great story. It sh- someone should write a, st- a book about him. Um, and getting, I'll be uh, every every Hurricane High School volleyball game. I'll be that because my girls just are half the, the team, right? Well, no, they're not half the team, but they they had tryouts yesterday and they made the team. So I'm excited about that. So no longer coaching, but I'm uh, going to be there cheering. Actually, I think I'm going to be keeping the books. So. Okay. <laughs> How terrifying is it for the opponent to see both of them? Well, you know, the thing is they're not real tall. Right. Uh, they're freshmen. Right. But, you know, I think not being uh, just because they're my kids, I, they're pretty good at it. Uh, but their height is a problem. But they're both really good at what they do. Uh, you don't have to be six foot tall to be a good volleyball player. So they both play positions that allow them to – their speed and their – Intelligence really helps them. So, have you been down uh, over the Henderson Center? Are you coach uh, Ari Agnes? You know? I did. I watched one of the uh, s- spring games, and uh, they're going to be fun to watch. They've they've got a set of twins, also. Yeah, so they're uh, yeah. I'm excited to see what she does with the program. Put a bug in her ear. Hey, I got a couple of girls you should recruit. <laughs> I mean, can you do that? I mean, is that that legal? Uh, I don't know if it's legal or not. Yes, yeah, I don't know. I mean, yeah, yeah this Lori Lawson no. thing. I got to be careful. But now. you know what? And I'm not talking about my girls, right? But, but if players are good in volleyball, coaches know, okay? Because they pl- they play travel volleyball, and you'll well if they the team they were on the last two years is really good. Like out of 275 teams, they finished uh, second and third the last two years. Um, when they would get to the finals of a big tournament, there was a uh, let's just say 25 parents from one team, 25 parents from the other. 
and about 25 college coaches watching 13 and 14 year old girls. They, I mean, they're watching already. Yeah, they've got like a little notebook. I'm sure. Yeah. You know, okay, mm-hmm. keep tabs on this one. Yeah. And, you yeah. Know. Wouldn't it be cool? Both of them going to Marshall, I, playing volleyball. I would absolutely love that. Yeah. You know, might as well dream big. I mean, imagine how much press the uh, in the record even. Yeah. <laughs> the volleyball yeah. team. Would get. I'll, I'll I'll start a sports section in my legal journal. <laughs> yeah. And in Facebook as well. <laughs> yeah. They. Uh, but you know, a lot of. I love volleyball, and uh, I started coaching it a few years ago, and I, uh, I just learned I had to learn it out of necessity, but I actually absolutely love it. There's so much strategy, and it's not just hitting the ball hard over the net. There's there's so much more that goes into it that the casual fan doesn't even realize. Yeah. But it's such a fun sport. You know what prevented me from being a longtime PA announcer for Marshall volleyball? What's that? My my upstart radio career. <laughs> Yeah, I yeah. had I had to make a decision. Yeah, because I was for one year over when they were in Gullickson, and you know mm-hmm. the PA was like the CB looking, yeah. looking microphone. Uh, I did that for a year, uh-huh. and I had to I had to make a choice. It was either that or the radio. Career. Yeah, uh, some people might think that uh, I chose poorly. <laughs> I, I don't know. Well, this I is mean, a year round job at least. Yeah, I mean, I mean the the fame though, because uh, I mean that's true. I yeah. mean, I could have been the next Mike Kurtner. That, well. We can all aspire to be that. I mean, look. I mean, he's been doing Marshall basketball forever. I could have been doing Marshall volleyball. Yeah. I could have been, you know, been like in the wings, working my way up. Yeah. Well, when when he's when when there's an exciting game, Mike at a basketball game makes it ten times yeah. more exciting. I mean, I, yeah, I could have been. You know what, Ryan Epley, another another Wayne grad. You know, mm-hmm. you know, I yeah, I let him. Yeah. Yeah, let him. Yeah. You know. I don't think he does volleyball. No. I, I think uh, Cornwell might be doing a few of those games. Bless our hearts. <laughs> Chris Dickerson, our guest. Hey, man, thanks for coming in. Uh, it's been fun. We'll do yeah, it again. Sounds good. Um, tomorrow on the program, uh, Steve Chapman's coming in. You know why? Because uh, there's racing going on at Ona, and they're going to bring in a, a, a beautiful, beautiful replica of Richard Petty's car. This thing is uh, authentic to, I think, the uh, bolt, the millimeter. Yeah, I have seen photos of it, and it looks amazing. So Steve's coming on the program tomorrow, and uh, we'll talk to him, and uh, he'll have some surprises. For our producer, Gabriel Sellers, for Chris Dickerson, I'm Paul Swan. Thanks for tuning in for today's edition of The Drive here on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. WRBC Huntington, W227BS Huntington. This is your radio home for Pittsburgh Pirates baseball. ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930.